So it's a good idea to make it a habit to check the blank whenever you mount it. In this case, I'm looking, I see um, a, a crack, which I'm hoping is just a surface crack. Um, I'm also seeing this edge. And again, this is a great uh, safety point. Something like this flying off at uh, 2000 RPM will probably uh, hurt you. And it could uh, probably really hurt you if it goes and hits your eye. So face mask is important, even with small, relatively small spindle work like this. So, um, and the other thing is this type of jaw, um, there's always this issue here. Um, and now uh, when I'm gonna be working down along the here, you have to be careful of <laughs> these things wrapping you. I don't know if you saw an earlier video or a later video, I'm not quite sure how I'm running these, but um, that was caused by that. And it doesn't look like a big deal, but it's a dull pain, <laughs> but it's a pain nevertheless. It's not a clean cut, that's for sure. So you know what? I usually have like a rubber band that I put over that. But if you don't, some electrical tape is not a big deal. Just make sure it's pretty well secured. Now, that's not going to stop it if you really run your hand up against it, but it will diminish the uh, <laughs> the damage, hopefully. But just, obviously, you don't, you want to keep your hand away from it. Okay. With that in mind, we're going to try to turn a finial here. That's a little different, and it's actually very difficult to turn. It's a series of beads from a small bead on up. So bear with me. I'm not going to sand or finish this. And uh, this is, again, probably going to be a real time, so it will take some time. So it's a great exercise, though. I could bring the center in to give it some more support. So I'm kind of thinking of how this is going to work from the smallest bead on up to the largest bead, which will be about in here. So I do it by eye very often, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to lay it out. Obviously, as the bead gets larger, you need more in length. All right, well, this is a good start. Okay. I'm off already. <laughs> so that didn't help. That... No, stick with me so we'll, we'll see what happens here. Maybe I could bring these down and buy myself some room. See, part of, part of the problem with the skew chisel is you're going to very easily catch this long point. You're getting the support from the long point. So I'm making these bead cuts with the short point. It leaves a beautiful surface, but it does get your eye blocked. Your vision is blocked by the tool itself. And I can come in with a long point to get the intersection a little nicer. Let's see if I can make fix this here. I think I can. We'll try to we'll try to save this. It's a pretty ugly bead. <laughs> we'll try, we'll keep going.
a little big. I'll try to trim this down a little. Now, if you need to adjust some things down here, you better do it now because you might not get the support you want. I notice this one is a little off, so I'm gonna try to make it better. This um, feels okay, but I'm checking to see if there's any rough areas and I'm supporting at the same time. So that actually feels good. Very often that part, which isn't moving much or at all, uh, you need to make sure you, you take it out. All right. And again, you get the best bead by using the short point, but a lot of times you might want to get to a certain point and then you might want to switch to the long point. It's a little tricky to pick up the cut without changing it and creating a flat spot. Yeah, so this is a great exercise in turning a bead with a skew. And it takes uh, a lot of practice. But you know, the skew is always a challenge. So now we're getting up to the beads that I have a little more practice with in terms of the size. Because the amount you roll and the amount you cut, if, you, if all you do is make these size beads when you have to start making a small bead, you have to practice. Plus you're getting more support as you're getting closer to where the wood is being held in the chuck. Well, I think you get the idea. The beauty part is when you're using the skew, you could probably start. You hate sanding. Great tool to learn how to use because you don't need much sanding with this. I'm getting, I'm running out of room here. So I'm going to be my last bead. Yeah, running out of room, you see? So this will be a little challenging. I'll finish this with the long point. There's some scoring in here. I'll try to read a very fine cut. Make sure there's no flat here. Cleaning cut. I feel a little something there, but I'm running out of room. So this side's a little tricky because of the access and clearance. And you saw what happened, I wasn't paying attention. Hopefully it's not too bad a catch. So this is a three quarter inch skew. At this point, I probably should have gone to a one inch skew because the, the amount, the diameter of the wood is relative to the size of the skew is important because this supported point is okay. But once you start dealing with a larger diameter, there's a good chance the, the shaving could ride up and now boom, and then you'll get a spiral catch like that. 
to see if we can save it. Here we go. Just we're gonna use just the corner, and hopefully I won't get a catch with this diameter. Okay. Now I shouldn't have a problem going this way, and then we can finish this baby up. Whenever you part, give yourself more room on the left. And you're not quite sure how you want that final bead to be. Going right into the end grain here, but I'll just nibble away and I'll continue and try to make a really nice finish to this last bead. Pick it up, get the shaving going. And now I'll just finish with a long point. Get rid of this last bit of waste. Tuck it under. Okay. But that's really good exercise. Just a couple score marks here. But all in all, it's not bad.